This machine got so freaking hot. All right, so it's not a secret, right? I like the M1 iMac, but the question is, can you edit 4K video on it, but not in Final Cut Pro? Because that's like the cheat code, right? I mean, it is like Apple's own software. So let's go ahead and put it to the test in this video. Will it survive or will it overheat and throttle down if we edit a 4K video in Adobe Premiere Pro on the brand new M1 iMac? Let's go ahead and break it down. So now that you guys already know what this video is all about, here's how I'm gonna break this all down in this video. Now, I'm gonna be taking you all through my entire editing process that I would personally do if I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro. Then we're gonna also go ahead and do another one with Final Cut Pro, but that's gonna be in a whole nother video, so make sure you guys are subscribed for that. Then I'm gonna be rating how well it was able to handle those tasks from start to exporting the video into its final .mp4 file. So let's go ahead and launch Premiere Pro. But before we actually do that, I want you all right now, comment down below how many likes is on this video at the time that you guys are watching it. Like literally at the time you guys are watching it, you guys already know the drill if you've been here before, but if you knew, comment down below how many likes is on this video and you already know I'm gonna be hanging out with you guys down there. Let's go ahead and launch Adobe Premiere. First thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. Uh, we're gonna also set up a sequence and then we're also gonna import our video files and set up a new project and everything like that. So let's go ahead and launch open Premiere Pro. I've already got my files here set up on my machine here. So we're gonna go ahead and start a new project like so. And we're gonna choose that folder. All right, so we're gonna leave everything pretty much the same. Go ahead and hit OK. Now, the first thing that I personally like to do is I like to go ahead and set up my my project. So I like to set up my sequence first for my timeline. So we're going to go ahead and go to File, New, Sequence. And we're going to do our frame size is going to be, we like to do 3840 by 1920. We're going to go ahead and press OK. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to go back in here and I want to go ahead and just add my files to this. So let's go ahead and go to this folder here. And we're gonna add our footage. So I have my footage folder here, which is just my video file, and I got my audio file. I'm gonna go ahead and just literally just drag that in like so, import the files. Now, the next thing I like to do is go ahead and sync my audio, is go here. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go to synchronize. So now if I play this back, it's gonna be in sync. Okay, so we know we got our sync files here. All right, so the first step is done. We got our project set up. We got our sequence set up. I've also synced the audio as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. Now when it comes to setting up my project, right? The adding the sequence as well as import my files into Premiere Pro. I gotta say it was pretty smooth. There was really nothing as alarming or anything like that. And I would personally rate it a 10 out of 10. Now, the next thing I will do with my video is get all of my talking portions completed as well as chopped up with cutting and splicing clips together before I actually add my B-roll clips on top of that. Let's go ahead and start adding my files to the timeline. And then we're gonna start cutting as well as finishing up the first pass of editing the video with adding color grading and all of that to the main shot of my footage. All right, so now that we've pretty much got our video here on our timeline, we've already pretty much added it to the timeline here. Now, the first thing I like to do is before I actually start cutting things up, I personally like to do my resizing of the entire timeline of me just talking first. And I like to go ahead and just set my scale position, my framing and different things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame this just about right here. And then the next thing I like to do is also add a little bit of color. Now, personally, I don't feel like I need to do too much here. Now, the only thing I'm probably gonna do is just brighten it just a little bit, uh, just because I just feel like it's just a little bit on the darker side. So I'm just gonna bump up the shadows a little bit here. Uh, probably bump up exposure just a, just a little bit, not too much. Dial in the whites a little bit. I'm gonna make the blacks a little deeper and boom we're good to go so let's go ahead and start chopping this bad boy up all right so now that i got my timeline here all leveled out here i got everything that i want um as far as my first a roll shot that I have her on my timeline. So let's go ahead and talk about how the experience was when it comes to editing my A roll, how I typically do it uh, within Premiere Pro. So my experience with editing as well as cutting and removing clips and splicing clips together, as well as doing just some very minimum basic color grading. Overall, it was pretty smooth because I don't like to do all that crazy color grading because I just personally think it's just unnecessary. I mean, I'm shooting videos of importance, but I'm not making like Marvel movies either. So do we really need to do all that color grading? But hey, 
another story for another day. <laughs> now I gotta be honest with you guys, there was this one time where it did kind of take a little bit longer to process. I guess what was happening was it was doing some extra thinking and trying to do some quick processing, but even though it kind of got stuck a little bit, it still was fairly quickly to handle it or whatever, and it wasn't that alarming, but it is something that I wanted to at least mention to you guys. Even with all of that, I still give it like an eight and a half out of 10, which is still like a B or B plus, unless somebody actually mess up the curve. Cause you already know, there was always that one smart person in the class that would mess the curve up for everybody. But still, I give it an eight and a half out of 10. All right, so the next thing I tend to do during the editing process is I start adding my B-roll clips to lay over top of my talking points. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add on our B-roll that I basically like to lay over top. So let's go ahead and go into my B-roll structure here that I wanna go ahead and add into here. All right, adds fairly quickly. I got a couple screen recordings and screenshots I wanna add in here as well. One area I know I wanna add this is gonna be right here, right here. So what I wanna do is I wanna just unlink the audio from it remove that like so and then the next thing i want to do is any type of sizing or anything like that that i want to do all right so i got my sizing down now let's go ahead and play this back but i question that as thick as the strip is actually on this machine i feel like they could have put better video quality in it all right so i got my b-roll and everything laid on top of this so let's go ahead and talk about what that experience is like as well so adding all of my b-roll clips on top of my a-roll clips was actually pretty smooth now i'm not gonna lie to you guys i thought it was actually gonna get hung up here because sometimes when you're layering two video files on top of each other it takes a little bit while for it to process and get caught up but i gotta be honest with you guys it was fairly smooth and i have to give this process a 10 out of 10 doing my editing workflow now the last thing that we got to try that i personally like to do in my videos is add some soft background music underneath all of my video footage so that way the video won't have like dead spaces like this You see what I mean? <laughs> Adding that just adds a little bit of life to the video, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do here before we export and everything, I like to add my music to the background of it. So I'm gonna go to where I like to get all my music from, which is Epidemic Sounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. Again, fingerprint sensor is so clutch. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and find some music that I like to kind of vibe with. Let's kind of see what this is. Hey. Hey, hey. Actually, you know what, man? Let me go to my guy. Let me go to my guy, CJ from CJ Unplug. He got his own playlist on here, which is actually really dope. Uh, it's called CJ Essentials. If you go to uh, albums and online creators, I'll have a link for a free 30 day trial where you guys can try Epidemic Sounds. You don't even have to put a credit card or anything like that in there. So I'll have a link for that down in the description section below. Let me go to my guy, CJ here. Let's see, let's see what my guy listening to here. Let me see. I like Grid World. I got Grid World. We're gonna we're gonna roll with Grid World. All right. So next thing I like to do here, let's go ahead and add this to our project line. Now, what I like to do is obviously I can't have this too loud, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the volume down on this bad boy. So then, what I like to do is literally just copy and paste, and I just copy and paste this all the way down. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gotta turn off that audio track so it don't copy up there. All right. And then I just kind of do that. And then if it's overflow, just cut that off like so. And then boom, we good to go. Audio has been added, so let me go ahead and tell you guys about that experience now. All right, so adding the music to my video files was actually pretty smooth. This part, I kind of expected to run smooth since audio files are generally smaller and they don't really add any stress to a timeline when editing like that since they are relatively smaller files and sizes, unlike if you add in like 4K video files on a timeline. So the last thing that we have left to do is render this bad boy out. We're gonna go ahead and export this video so that I can get it up it to YouTube. Now when I'm doing this, I'm also going to record how long it actually takes to render this video as well as how long it actually took to export this video. Now for those that don't really know what the heck I'm even talking about, like see kid, what the heck is rendering and what the heck is exporting? So basically rendering in a video is like taking all of the layers and effects and everything that you've completed on that timeline that I literally just showed and built for you guys is going to compile it all together in a format that can be exported into a .mov or .mp4 file to be able to upload to YouTube if that makes sense. Now, that's the simplest way that I can explain it to you guys. All right, so the last thing I want to show you guys real quick before we wrap this up, I got to show you guys the uh, rendering as well as the exporting process. So let me go ahead and set my in and out points. So go ahead and let the video play. 
Boom, I got my out point right there. Now, to go up here, I just go to sequence and then I'm gonna go render in and out. Render in to out. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this kind of play out right here on my phone. And we're gonna see how long this actually takes for us to render this. All right, y'all, so finally, we're finally finished rendering this video out. Uh, and we're right here at 25 minutes and 23 seconds of rendering time. Now, here's some of my takeaways. This machine got so freaking hot uh, when it comes to rendering videos out on this machine in Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, literally, this area right here in the center is extremely hot, like it is blazing hot to the touch. Um, and I definitely think it caused some performance issues when it comes to rendering on this machine that allowed it to be 25 minutes and 23 seconds. Took a long time in order for the render. So the next thing we're gonna do here real quick, we're gonna go ahead and export this video out so we can actually get it in the MP4 file uh, that I talked about. We're gonna go into export, go to media, and we're gonna go and set it to H.264. Uh, I got my output here. We're gonna output it to this file. Now I always like to create a file inside of there or a folder inside of it called final. And then I'll just name my file. I'll just do Adobe Premiere Pro test. And we're gonna press save. Got it in an MP4 format. And we're gonna go ahead and press export. And we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same test to see how long does it take to actually export this video out to a MP4 file using what we saw right here on the screen. So let's uh let's wait it out. Now this is something that I just noticed for the first time is the fan has just kicked on when it comes to exporting. Now it did not kick on when it came to rendering this video file out, but when I turned on as far as exporting this file, now I can actually hear the fans actually going off. Now I will say the fan noise is not like crazy loud, like it's manageable, it's still not as loud as something like a freaking uh, MacBook Pro on the Intel version. Still hear it, but it's just not crazy loud like we got on any of the other older Intel machines. All right, y'all, so now the exporting process is now finished. We are looking at right at 21 minutes and 19 seconds that it took in order to export uh, this video out into a MP4, into an MP4 file. So all in all, from exporting to rendering, uh, I gotta be honest, uh, I'm not impressed with that just because it's like one, the fans definitely kicked on, which I, I would assume that it would do so. And then all in all, it takes about 45 plus minutes to render as well as export a video file within Adobe Premiere. So to answer the question, can the brand new M1 iMac handle 4K video file and editing and everything like that with Adobe Premiere? The answer to that question is yes, it can. Uh, but I gotta rate the rendering and exporting process. I would probably give that somewhere like a six out of 10 when it come with that. And yes, that is somewhere around like a D or an F, depending on what school you go to. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do feel like I wish the process was a little bit shorter when it comes to rendering and exporting on the M1 iMac. Now I do understand that Adobe Premiere is not optimized yet for Apple's M1 silicone chip. So there's a little bit caveat there, but if I'm being honest with you guys, I do feel that that process is a little bit on the longer side. So there you have it. Reasons like this is why I always tell you guys, if you guys are doing any type of Photoshop, uh, music production, heavy video editing, like the one that I'm doing here on a consistent basis, then you definitely gonna wanna look at and buy a 16 gigabyte RAM option instead of an eight gigabyte RAM option because with a good amount of browser tabs open, Photoshop open, a tool like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro open can literally max out your eight gigabyte RAM option if that's what you have. And you're gonna start noticing slower performance out of your machine and that's just not something we want. So do yourself a favor, get the 16 gigabyte RAM option on any of these M1 machines. Make sure you also get the cheapest option for storage because again, 
Apple charges way too freaking much for storage. They know they need their butt whoops for that. But anyway, let me break this down to you. So listen, Apple charges $800 for two terabytes of internal storage and $400 for just one terabyte of storage. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to save money with this. All you guys gotta do is go to this site and I go there all the time and I buy all of my Apple accessories and stuff there and stuff like that from it and it is called the applenest.com and whether you guys have an m1 imac or you have an m1 mac mini just buy the usb-c hub with the built-in ssd enclosure on it for only 89 bucks i think they actually running a sale right now so you might not want to miss that go ahead and buy the samsung evo sata ssd one terabyte drive for just 130 dollars and i think they also have it as a bundled on that website as well and you can get the enclosure and the drive for just 220 bucks which gives you the same amount of storage but for 200 to six hundred dollars cheaper than what apple is charging you literally putting money back in your pocket and you can just velcro it to the back of your machines like i did on my imac and then have one underneath your m1 mac mini but again i will have a link for that down in the description section below for you guys so that way it's easy for you to find trust me this is the way you need to go instead of giving apple any unnecessary money they already deep in my pockets and i ain't trying to give them no more money than what i have to and plus y'all already know man i'm all about saving you guys some money if i can do it without sacrificing performance on your machines and different things that you guys buy you know how i get down guys when it comes to getting y'all set up right I get y'all right. To answer the original question, can the M1 iMac handle editing 4K video in Adobe Premiere Pro with a normal video workflow as your only main machine? Yes, and I personally think it did a pretty good job considering Premiere Pro is not even yet optimized for Apple Silicon. So think about it, when that part comes in, Adobe Premiere is just gonna get even better. Go get your edit on and buying on if you haven't copped this machine just yet. All the links for everything I talked about in this video will be down in the description section below. See y'all in the next one, squad. <laughs>